Today we're going to learn about solving equations with square roots. This is lesson 2.8, the squaring property of equality. Page number 38 in your interactive notebook. Our learning target today is to apply the square root property of equality to solve equations with square roots. So we learned how to solve equations with squares. Now we're going to learn how to solve equations with square roots. Squaring property of equality states that squaring both expressions in an equation produces an equivalent equation with sides that remain equal. So if we have the expression A equaling the expression B, then if we square both sides, we multiply both sides by itself, we would get A times A equals B times B, or A squared equals B squared. So if you multiply both of the expressions in an equation by itself, it produces an equation that is equivalent. And that makes sense to us intuitively if we think about scales. If we have on one side of the scale three twos, we know that the three twos is equal to two threes, right? And so if we multiply three twos by itself, then we would have something that would look like this. And if we multiplied the two threes by itself, we would have something like, like this. And the scale would still be equal because the values of both of the expressions simplify to the same number. And algebraically, we can prove that this is the case by actually taking the side and squaring it and taking this side and squaring it. Well, we know that 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. And we know that 6 squared is 36. And we know that 3 plus 3 is 6. And we know that three, uh, 6 squared is 36. So multiplying both sides of the equation by whatever that side is, um, is one of the properties that we can use. Right? And the same is true when we have variables. If we have two variables and we don't know what these boxes are, we just know there's two of them. We can go ahead and square both sides, and what we get is 4x squared equals, and then 54 squared comes out to 2,916. So we can multiply each side by itself, and it would produce an equation that is equivalent. So we're going to use this today in our examples. Example 1. Rearrange the equation using properties to reveal the solution or solutions that satisfy the statement of equality. So we're just trying to figure out what value for n makes the right expression equal 3. Or use mathematical tools to find the zeros of the equation. And that was what we learned when we graphed equations. We're looking for where the line intersects the, the horizontal axis. And our zeros were referred to as when you find the x value for when y equals 0. We're trying to find that, that, that x value for when the y value equals the 0. That's what root 0 is referred to as, the x-intercept, essentially. So our first step is to denote a variable expression and a number expression. And when you look at this equation here, because there's only one variable, it makes the most sense to denote this expression as the variable expression and this expression as the number expression. Our second step is to simplify the expressions in, on both sides of the equation. So on the left side, we just have a 3. You can't simplify that. And then on the right side, we just have the square root of n divided by 12. And you can't really simplify that either. So we're just going to bring that down. Now, we're going to use inverse operations and properties to rearrange the equation. So we're going to start solving to isolate the the variable expression with just the variable. And, a be, and the best way to um, begin isolating and, and figuring out what we need to eliminate is using SADMEP. So we're going to start by looking to see, is there anything that's being added or subtracted in the variable expression? No, there's nothing that's being added or subtracted. Then we're going to move on to division and multiplication. Is there anything that's being multiplied or divided? Yes, there's a 12 that is being divided. But because it is under the square root, it is technically in parentheses. So in order to, to, to um, unpack the division, we first need to unpack the square root. And so then we move in to the exponent. Exponent. Well, I want to have you make a mental note that square roots are actually exponents. So if I rewrote this square root expression, 
as an exponent, the square root expression would look like n divided by 12 to the 1 half power. So square roots are actually exponents to the 1 half power. I want you to associate these two things as the same thing because they are. 1 half power is what a square, square root looks like as an exponent. So if we want to get rid of the square root, that would come under the exponent phase in SADMEP. So let's go ahead and get rid of the square root. What's the inverse of a square root? The inverse of a square root is a square. So we need to square both sides. So we can go ahead and square the left expression. And then we can go ahead and we can square the right expression. Why can I square root? Sorry, why can I square both sides? We just learned about this, the square root property of equality. Now that I've squared both sides, I can go ahead and simplify. So 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. And the square root of n divided by 12 squared is just n divided by 12. And technically, that is still in parentheses because it is now to the first power, right? So we just simplified. And we know that anything to the first power because of the multiplicative identity does not need to be written to the first power. So we can just write it as n divided by 12. Now we need to get rid of the 12 that's being divided. So finally we get to the point where we can get rid of this, this number. The inverse of division is multiplication. So we need to multiply both sides by 12. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to multiply 12 to the right expression. And we're going to multiply 12 to the left expression. And, we can use the, and we're using the multiplicative property of equality to rewrite the equation like this. 12 times 9 is 108. Just use the calculator to make sure. And 12 times n divided by 12. Well, we know that 12 divided by 12 is 1. And we're left with 1n. What did we do? We simplified. And now we know that if we have 1n, essentially we have n. Because we've eliminated the coefficient. So we can rewrite this using the multiplicative identity again. And our answer is... N or 108 equals N. Now for our fourth step, if necessary, we can rearrange this expression to have zero on one side and then graph to see what the zero is, but we have a equation where that's not necessary. So we can move into step five, which is important. We need to verify the solution by evaluating each expression to test, to test their equality. So we need to plug in the solution for the variable. So we have on our left side, we just have 3, can't do anything there. And then on our right side, we have 108 divided by 12, and we're going to take the square root of that. So let's plug that into the calculator. Okay, so you can see that I've plugged it in the calculator, the square root of 108 divided by 12. And when I hit enter, we need this right side to simplify to 3, because we know that 3 equals 3. And the right side simplifies to 3. So we know that we found the correct solution because both of the expressions are equal. Put it in set notation. We would just write n, n equals 108. And remember, we're not spacing in Schoology um, unless we're spacing between two words. Example number two. So step one is to denote variable and number side. Obviously, it makes sense to make this left side the variable side, since there is only one variable here, and the right side number side. Now, step two, we look to see, is there anything that we can simplify? No, there's nothing to simplify on the right expression. And there's nothing to simplify on the left expression. So we can move into step three. Now, let's start unpacking this. So, let's begin by eliminating addition and subtraction. Again, you can see that the, the number that's being subtracted, this negative 4, is inside parentheses. So before we can get rid of this subtraction, we need to get rid of the square root. There's nothing on the outside of the square root that's being multiplied or divided. So now we can get rid of the square root. And remember, the square root is an exponent. So to get rid of the square root, we need to square. So we can go ahead and square both sides. We're going to square the variable expression.
and we're going to square the number expression. And I mislabeled this in the previous example. This is the squaring property of equality. So I want to just address that. It is not the square root property of equality. Whoops. Is the squaring property of equality, not the square root. Not to be confused. Honest mistake. Okay, back to second example. So now that we've squared both sides, we can go ahead and simplify. So we know that on this side, the exponent's going to simplify to the first power. Now we're just left with negative 4 minus 50x to the first power equals 14 squared is 196. Now that we've simplified, we can go ahead and rewrite this just as four, negative 4 minus 50x equals 196 because of the multiplicative identity. Now that we have gotten rid of the square root, we can start using um, SADMEP again to eliminate the subtraction. So we're going to eliminate the negative 4 by adding. So we're adding to both sides using the additive pro added addition property of equality. We know that 4 minus 4 is 0, and 0 minus, because the negative sign of the 50, equals 200. We simplified. And now we can rewrite this just as negative 50x equals 200, because the additive identity, we do not need to write the 0. Now we need to get rid of the negative 50. The negative 50 is being multiplied, so we need to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. We need to divide both sides by negative 50. In doing so, we have negative 50x divided by negative 50, 200 divided by negative 50. So you'll notice that when you divide and you multiply, you're not trying to eliminate the variable. You're trying to eliminate the numbers in front of, the coefficients in front of the variable. When you add and you subtract, you are eliminating things to zero, so you're eliminating them completely. When you multiply and divide, you're just trying to get a 1 without having eliminated the variable. So negative 50 divided by negative 50 simplifies to 1, and 200 divided by negative 50 simplifies to a negative 4. And we know that x equals negative 4 because of the multiplicative identity. Now for step 4, which we do not need to do. It's not ne necessary to graph this type of problem because we've got a solution. Let's verify our solution. So you can see once we put negative 4 back in for x in the original equi um, equation on the variable side, we need this left side to simplify to 14 if this is in fact the solution. And we put in the calculator, and in fact it does. 14 equals 14. This is true. Example number 3. So we're going to denote our variable side. We've got variables on, on both sides this time, so I'm just going to select the side. I'll denote this as the variable side, so I'll keep the variable here. I'll try to eliminate it over here. Now there's nothing to simplify in either of these expressions. There's no like terms. There's nothing to distribute. So we can move into step three. Step three, we need to start using SADMIP. Now because the variable on the number in the number expression is inside the square root, in order to eliminate the variable on the number side, we have to eliminate the square root first. So that's exactly what we're going to do. In order to eliminate the square root, we need to square both sides. So we're squaring both sides, and now we can simplify both sides after squaring them. Coincidentally, because we're trying to eliminate the variable on the number side, and we had to eliminate the square root first, when we squared both sides, we in fact eliminated or unpacked, undid, the square roots on both the equations. So now we can just rewrite this using the multiplicative identity. And now by looking at the equation, you can see all we have is now a variables on both variables in both expressions equation. We know that this is our number side, so let's start with getting rid of the variable on our number side. To 3k, we need to get it to 0, so we need to subtract 3k to both sides. Now, technically, to simplify um, our like terms, we need to commute the terms next to each other. And because we're changing the order of things that are being added, or technically it looks like subtraction, we're using the commuter property of addition. Now we can go ahead and simplify. When we simplify, we get 0. And then we can combine these like terms here, and we get negative 1, and I should have plus 3. And then we can rewrite the equation with the additive identity without adding 0. 